to the world of building design. This is another episode of HVAC system design. Um, uh, in this tutorial, uh, we are going to continue on the um, hydronic system. We are going to review the primary secondary hydronic system. So before we get into any example, I would like to um, review what we discussed in the previous tutorial. We want to expand a little bit uh, on how the primary secondary hydronic loop works and uh, we go through some uh, scenarios as we did in the previous tutorial. Uh, I decided to, to stay on this topic a little bit longer so we can explore different scenarios in a hydronic system in more detail before we get into any more realistic example. So before we get into the tutorial content today, uh, I would like to also invite you to have a look at the description of this tutorial on the link below. There are a number of links where it directs you to a number of um, HVAC system design books, some of the ASHRAE standards and uh, some tools for, uh, for sizing hydronic and air distribution system, uh, as well as there are some uh, directory to some of the book series for the fire protection system. I fully recommend them in case you can obtain them, read through them, and I recommend them. They are very helpful for, for you to increase your knowledge set in the area of the HVAC system design. So don't forget to have a look and go through the uh, link directory in case you need to purchase any of these uh, relevant resources. So let's get us started on our tutorial for today. So I'm going to go to this first page as we discussed that this is going to be the topic. We're going to look at the piping arrangement on the primary secondary hydronic loop. And when we say the hydronic loop, we're basically talking about um, water system or uh, this can be chilled water or hot water for the boiler system. It can be also applied to, uh, you know, mixed solution uh, for like glycol solution in a hydronic system, which is very common in in uh, countries like Canada or US where there is a you know, cold climate exists in some geographic locations where you have to uh, make sure that you protect your hydronic from freezing when they are uh, recirculated outside of uh, any heated buildings. So we're going to look at some relationship uh, between the primary, secondary and how temperature would, would change into this two system depending on the you know relationship between the primary secondary loop so here is a example of uh, a number of uh, you know uh, sources remember that we said from the previous tutorial that our primary loop is basically is what you can see on the uh, left hand side so that's basically our primary loop right here and our secondary loop is what you can see on the right hand side so that's going to be our secondary loop right here. How the primary and secondary loop are interconnected is based between these two points. So this is called a common bridge or common pipe. In this example we have, you can assume this is going to be boilers. So this can be, this can be your boilers. So you have three boilers here, you have recirculating pumps and on the secondary side you have the secondary pumping system that distributes your hydronic into your uh, loads or into your building. So this is supply side and then you have a return side uh, going back. So that's that's just a very basic arrangement of the primary secondary loop. As you can see, this is schematically shown here. These are you know, isolation valves that are schematically shown in the real uh, construction. Uh, you have to provide the isolation valves on both sides of the uh, pumping system, regardless whether it's primary loop or secondary loop. Uh, for the purpose of isolation, you have to provide the bypass uh, line, uh, which we'll get into this uh, details in the future tutorial. Moving along, here, as you can see, uh, we have a secondary uh, primary line, and we have uh, two chillers in here, where you have one of the one of the um, you know sources are on and is working, and you have uh, the second. The second you know source whether it's boiler or chiller it's uh, offline at the moment and on the secondary side you have your uh, uh, secondary pumps which are uh, running at a, at a maximum capacity of 1000 gpm so you can imagine that each of these pumps are providing uh, or handling uh, 500 gpm of load so in total you have a thousand gpm recirculation 
So the secondary and primary load are uh, the same in terms of the load and in terms of the production. So you provide this to, to your uh, secondary loop. So in this case, because you provide 45 degree, it means that you're, you're providing the chilled water because that's, that's the range of uh, chilled water supply temperature. And on the return side, you expect a temperature of 10 degree temperature difference. So you, you gain the heat through your chilled water system at a 55 degree, you return the chilled water back into your uh, primary loop. So at this condition, you're not expecting any flow in your common pipe, which is right here. So you don't expect any um, flow movement. So basically you have movement in this direction and then on the return side, you get the straight uh, movement to this direction of the chilled water. So, uh, so the primary and secondary has the same load. So there's no, no load expected in the common pipe. So that's, that's one of the scenarios that we can be, uh, we can happen. In the second scenario, where the load is larger than your production. So if you're, if you're running one of your chillers at the full capacity at 1000 uh, GPM, chill water supply, and the other chiller is offline. Uh, but your uh, secondary uh, side of uh, the chiller system, uh, you have a higher load. Basically, you have as much load as 1200 GPM. So uh, you have this load right here. So what's going to happen is that because on the primary side, you have 1000 chill water supply, um, in order to recirculate 1200 GPM into your secondary loop, you have to return 200 GPM back recirculated from your return line upward. So basically when you have 1200 GPM supply on your secondary side to your uh, system, you get 1200 on the return side where 1000 GPM goes back to your primary loop and 12, 200 GPM goes back into your secondary merges with the 1000 GPM of uh, chilled water. So basically what's going to happen in this scenario where your load is higher than your, um, uh, your uh, production or your primary source, your secondary loop is going to starve the necessary chilled water at uh, required temperature. So it means that uh, the supply now is not going to be 45 degree as usual. It means that now you're sending the chilled water at a higher temperature into your secondary loop because this one single chiller is not, is not sufficient to satisfy the load of your building on the secondary side. So this is very important. This is basically the basis of some form of uh, uh, sequence of operation for your uh, dual chillers on how they operate, how after the primary chiller, the secondary chiller is energized to satisfy this additional load. So that's, that's the scenario where the load is higher than the chilled water production on the primary side. So now we go to uh, the third possibility. And before we go to the other possibility, I just wanted to show you this schematic that you have seen before, but we have another element is added in between here. I would like you to write in the comment section, what is this element in here? And what's the purpose of this that we input in between the common pipe or between the primary and secondary loop, what we are trying to avoid. Uh, please uh, put in the comment section what you think about it and we can uh, touch on this in the next tutorial with the examples. Going to another scenario where your production is higher than your load. When we say production, the chilled water production happening through these two chillers. So now that each of the chiller had a thousand GPM capacity, now we are sending 2000 GPM of chill water uh, or recirculating 2000 GPM of chill water through our loop. If our load is less than our chill water generation, in this case, we have 1800 GPM of chill water required for the secondary loop. Uh, it means that we are sending some additional chilled water back to our primary loop. 2000 GPM comes to the common pipe here. 1800 is going to the secondary loop to the building. 
because that's the building load and 200 GPM comes back and is recirculated to the chiller loop or to the primary loop. And then on the return side, 1800 chill water comes back, is added to this 200. So we have 1800 here added to 200 from the top. So we get 2000 GPM going into the primary loop so what's going to happen in the mixing point? Where is this point? What's going to happen in the mixing point? So it means that the chilled water return at the 55 degree Fahrenheit is added to 200 GPM chilled water at 45 degree Fahrenheit. The temperature coming back in here is less than the expection. So we expected 55 degree Fahrenheit chilled water going back, but we get basically colder chilled water return because we are generating higher chilled water on the primary side than required on the secondary side. So that's another scenario that where we have equally loaded chillers uh, for each of the, the chillers. From the controlling perspective, we have to consider that the functioning of our primary loop is a little bit different than functioning of our secondary loop in a sense that we have to uh, make sure that when the, the primary side sees a temperature difference from the secondary side, uh, it changes the modulation of the chiller. So the chiller's uh, temperature and the flow relationship is a step functioning compared to our secondary loop. That's the um, topic of today's presentation. So in the next presentation, we are going to focus more on the examples, uh, more realistic examples of primary secondary system. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, any comments please provide uh, your comments in the comment section um, if you haven't subscribed in this channel of the world of building design please uh, uh, go ahead and subscribe and uh, press on the notification buttons to see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted thank you